I'm going to introduce the second deliverable for the group projects in 636 now. And I'm using a version that I'll upload to Blackboard very shortly that is slightly out of date with what I had planned on doing at the beginning of the semester, but I still do not have access to any of the materials in my office on campus, so I don't have the original source file from which this document was created, and I can't really change it without uh, change it from memory without having reference to the, the plan that I had at the beginning. Uh, so we'll, we'll go with this, and I'll point out the problem. It's kind of obvious and easy to remove. Um, when we get to it. Uh, again, this is the second deliverable, so it's a continuation of the first document, the problem analysis and requirements document that you created. And you're still playing the same role. Generic Corporation has approved your problem analysis and requirements document, and they're now interested in pursuing the system into design. So you're tasked with creating an actual design document, an implementation plan, um, and this is the, the outline of the kinds of things that you're going to need to do. Now, uh, from a grading standpoint, not all of the elements in this list are required. Okay, You'll have to do some, but not all of them. Uh, the introduction is required, the data flow diagrams are required, and the entity relationship diagrams are required. Uh, as is the discussion of coupling and cohesion, this is generally considered to be the hardest part of the assignment, and the interface structure diagram. Everything else is up to you. You get to choose uh, two of the group choice options uh, to do, and then you can also choose to do the updated project plan as a bonus material. Okay. So again, these are all presented in kind of a similar format as in the first deliverable where we have recommended word counts for the actual deliverable. And there's a question at the end of each section that should be the target you're trying to address. So for the introduction, which is required, the question is really what are the goals and outcomes of this document, right? Uh, giving enough background so that somebody's going to be able to understand what you're trying to do in this document and what you would consider to be a success, 400 to 700 words. Uh, with the data flow diagrams, it's a little bit more prescriptive because I want you to actually create a, a level zero DFD and then three child diagrams for that level zero DFD for a total of four diagrams. And you have to describe, you have to walk through each one in some kind of natural language text as well. And the questions you're trying to answer, what data does your system require? When and where does your system require this data? And what does your data, what data does your system produce and why? Okay, uh, should be fairly standard part of the process. I think you were kind of expecting to do data flow diagrams and entity relationship diagrams. Entity relationship diagrams, you only need the one, um, and it is a little bit more variable in terms of word count because not every system is super heavy into the data. Uh, but again, this is a fairly common expected part of the, the deliverable. All right, now we get to the first group choice option. You can see my first uh, flaw that I had corrected in the, the other version. This should be labeled. It should be the fourth option here, uh, the use case analysis. Uh, it's listed as a group choice option. Your group may not want to do this, um, so you don't have to. You have to choose this. Uh, if you've previously used use case analysis in your problem analysis and requirements document, then it, it may just be redundant, and you you can't choose to do this. Um, if you are interested in afterwards uh, doing a sequence diagram, then this becomes required. So I'll bring the sequence diagram fully onto the screen here. To, to sort of show you the relationship between these two. Uh, you do have a choice as to whether or not you do the group, the use case analysis, assuming you haven't previously done it for the, the, the first deliverable, the problem analysis and requirements document. Uh, and you can stop there if you want. You don't have to uh, do anything beyond that. But if you also wanted to do the sequence diagram, uh, then you'd have to have a, a use case analysis. So you can't have the sequence diagram and then not have a use case uh, analysis. There, there's a dependency between the two. Okay, and these are basically what we presented in class. The use case analysis is trying to give you a sense of what a sample interaction from a particular user's perspective would look like. And the sequence diagram is trying to help you understand um, the, the particular order of the things that are happening in this use case and how your design uses the sequence uh, uh, to, to actually accomplish the goal that the user may have. There's a similar relationship between the class diagram which you can choose to do, and the state diagram. So if you do a state diagram, then I expect you also see a class diagram because the state diagram is looking at a particular class within a larger class diagram. In the same way that a sequence diagram is looking at a particular use case within a larger use, use case diagram. There's a relationship there that requires a dependency between these two. 
Uh, and then we get to the discussion of coupling and cohesion. This is uh, generally the hardest part of the assignment for a lot of groups. Uh, the idea behind this is that you have to describe all of the aspects of your system that are coupled together and why that coupling is necessary. You need to be able to describe all the related data and functions and how you've decided to group them and break them up. Essentially, this is a discussion about how do you believe that you've achieved optimal modularity with the design that you've laid out for the problem you're trying to solve. It's not a particularly easy section um, in that it's sometimes difficult to figure out what optimal looks like and why, you know, what reasoning you have to support optimal uh, modularity. That said, uh, it's also relatively short, so you, you don't need to go into detail of every single data element. You, we're really more interested in the coupling pieces, like the decisions that you made to couple modules. So if you talk about it at the module le level, it's much, much easier than if you get bogged down in the details of every single data element. User interface mockup. So this is a group choice option, a very popular one in previous semesters. You can choose to create a mockup, a wireframe. Um, you, it can be done in... Um, Photoshop, it can be done in HTML, however you choose to do it, designing the interface for your system. And I need at least two diagrams, right? There's going to be at least two screens or two interfaces that you have to show me uh, in detail what they're going to look like, and then a plan to uh, carry that same consistent look and feel throughout the rest of the system uh, in, three, in uh, 600 to 800 words. And then we have the interface structure diagram. This is a required part for everyone to, to do. Um, this is essentially looking at the previous, uh, the, the, um, the previous lecture and going through and creating an interface structure diagram to highlight the flow of the interface from one screen to the next. Then you can choose to either do a structure chart or a control flow diagram. I do not want to see both, so you have two options for the group choice category, as we'll show when you get to the grading section. And in this case, you can choose to do one or the other, but not both. Um, if you choose to do the structure chart, you're really looking at the structure and modularity, and this is a good choice to go with the coupling and cohesion. So if you're struggling with coupling and cohesion, cohesion, I would recommend doing the structure chart. Um, the control flow diagram uh, doesn't help quite as much with that, but it's another option if you're really interested in just working through a particular uh, somewhat complicated process. And then updating the project plan. The project plan you created in your first deliverable is intended to be updated throughout the, the, the life cycle of the project, so uh, you'll receive bonus points for updating it for this particular project. Here's how the grading would break down. Whoops. Um, each of these are each of these projects are going to be graded out of 100, and the last 20 points are for grammar. So I'm really only looking at the the, the 80 points that are non-grammar related here, uh, the the 80 points that would be graded uh, in conjunction with the the teaching assistant, and then I will handle the, the grammar at the end. Uh, the introduction is 10 points. Data flow diagram is 20. This is the most important section from a point standpoint, but it's also the most important uh, or most time-consuming from a work-related standpoint. Then the entity relationship diagram is 10. Then you have your two group choice. And remember, if you choose something like the sequence diagram for group choice number one, then your group choice number two has to be the use case diagram, and you probably want to flip the order in the actual paper because right, there is some dependency for the, the sequence diagram and the state machine diagrams. Uh, you're kind of choosing both group choices at once if you choose either of those two. And the discussion of coupling and cohesion is worth 10 points. Uh, this non-prototyping option, when you see this in the, uh, in the document, non-prototyping refers to an option that was available to previous semesters and is no longer available in this semester. If I could get access to my desktop at my office, I would be showing you uh, a, a version of this document that does not include the non-prototyping option language, but you don't need to worry about um, the, the prototyping option. You, you will definitely be doing a discussion of coupling and cohesion and also a interface structure diagram. Um, again, there's the, the prototyping grading scale that's, uh, that's mentioned throughout as well. I'm not interested in doing that anymore in part because I removed it from the, the problem analysis section, so you won't see that. Uh, okay, and then the last most critical point here, that the, the 20 points for grammar are really all about quality of writing and cohesiveness of the document. It needs to read as if it was written by a single author and has a single clear voice. Grammar errors, especially ambiguous statements about the design, are massively problematic. And so um, where possible, I will highlight those and, and use, uh, use this to grade this. Uh, I'm not really interested in 
some of the really nitpicky pieces of grammar, I'm, I'm really more interested in making sure that you're communicating clearly. So a good example of this is if you cite something, I don't care if you use MLA or APA or, or IEEE style or whatever it is. As long as I can tell what you're citing, that's not a problem. What I do care about are statements that are somewhat ambiguous or problematic from a standpoint of being able to understand the document in its entirety. All right, so that is the second uh, deliverable for the groups, and I will upload this momentarily. And if you have questions, you can contact me, talk on the discussion boards, or uh, contact me by email or during office hours. Thanks.